Hi, year 10. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, this is a video to just help you with the research and planning of component three, really important part of your media uh, course as a whole, um, and the first time you've done something like this. So a bit tricky, but you need to crack on with it. This video will hopefully um, talk you through what you need to do. I'd watch it through for the first time in its um, entirety, and then go through it a second time, pause it, and have a go at each task at a time. Good luck. Okay, so here we go, uh, component three, uh, and it's film marketing. That's the brief we've chosen. So you need to create some film marketing for your own film, um, but of course your film must respond to the brief that you were given about a month ago. Uh, and if you deviate too far from that brief, then you won't get many marks. So it's really important that you are creative, but it's also really important that you stick to the brief. Like I said a minute ago, 30% of your final grade, it's as much as the two exams you're going to take. Uh, so you really do need to do well at this. And make the most of the time on your hands. So organisation uh, and meeting deadlines are really important for you. Um, I would have said this anyway, but obviously with uh, kind of class time being taken away from you, I'm relying on you really uh, to making sure you get bits of work done before we come back. If you do get it all done, then we can crack on with the filming upon your return, hopefully without too much of a dent in the overall course prep. So do make sure you're organised, do make sure you meet deadlines, good advice anyway. Uh, I gave you booklets before you went to make notes in, that will help you with some of the tasks I'm going to show you through in a minute. Like I say, you won't start production until you've done all your research and planning. You probably took media because you want to do all of the kind of production stuff, so good opportunity while you're off school to get that done anyway. Uh, and I'll talk you through the research and planning in this video. Says their tip, all the best work has a USP, so a unique selling point. You've got a brief to meet, but at the same time, try and have something unique going through your head uh, when it comes to making up your own ideas, because that just gives you a bit of an edge when it comes to me marking your work at the end. So let's read the brief, which is completely important, because if you just make up any film of your choice, you won't get many marks. So here it is. Brief three, film marketing is what we've chosen, and it says to create a DVD or a Blu-ray front and back cover and a theatrical release poster for a film which is new in the thriller genre. And if you want to pick a subgenre, crime or psychological thriller, then that's absolutely fine. So that's the first thing you need to get stuck in your head. Do not produce anything that isn't a thriller film. Secondly, a TA is 14 to 20 year olds. So do not um, create something that's got a really mature audience or something that would perhaps appeal to really young kids. Again, you're not going to be fitting the brief. Uh, it needs to have a 12A certificate, which is absolutely fine. And basically all images that are on your work has to be taken by you unless it's a barcode or a film company logo. So don't go on Google Images and nick anything off there. You'll get completely uh, chopped down in terms of marks. <clears throat> So minimum requirements are here down the right hand side. I'll let you take a look at those. It's basically worth pausing it and looking through those. You should have it with you anyway. But across the two texts that you create, there must be at least eight images. There must be at least two different locations. There must be at least three different characters, of which one is a protagonist, a hero. Uh, and it must have a narrative that suits the genre. So you're going to have to write a blurb on the back of your DVD, for example. But also the imagery should be able to show moments of disruption or action or enigma. Um, and you should be pretty well read up on that sort of stuff now. Basically, everything we've done this year should be informing how you use media language to create meaning. So do have a good think about that. There's more information there. And when it says a minimum, try and go beyond that. So if you do give eight images and two locations, you're kind of doing the bare minimum. Try and look for more locations, more characters, and really flesh out your film to be as interesting as possible. So key bits of information, that's what you really need to retain in your mind. You're making a DVD and the poster must be portrait in size. So start thinking about the types of images and composition you'll need. It's for a thriller film. It's for your age group, which is nice. The certificate must be 12A at most, but I don't think you want to go below that for a thriller film either. At least eight images, at least two locations, at least three characters and a suitable narrative for the genre and audience. So this is really, really important. You don't get marked heavily on your research and planning, but if you don't do the research and planning well, you will not 
produce very good work. And I can tell you from about 10 years of teaching, that's definitely the case. So when you return to school, be it in a few weeks or a month or so, uh, your idea should be finalised, ready for filming. So I want all this work emailing that back to me really over the next week or two. So I'm going to talk you through research. We need to study DVDs and posters for films, but we also need to study the genre, uh, which is thriller. We'll do a little bit of institutional research as well. And then we obviously need to start thinking about your planning, which should be rooted in the research you've done. But remember, a USP at the heart of it as well. So I'm going to skip through this pretty quickly because it's basic stuff. But before anything else, I need you to be sure that you understand what the conventions, so the basic ingredients of a film poster are. I've got three completely random ones there. They're not from your genre, but that doesn't matter yet. We've got the name of the film. We've got the cast. We've got a main image. We've got a protagonist. And they differ slightly, but you can see that they're fairly conventional. They've all got the same sorts of things. The same goes for DVDs. And I've actually listed the type of things that they would include there on the front, the back and the spine. But do think carefully already at this stage about the type of images you want to take. For example, the main image on the back of the DVD tends to have quite clever composition, lots of empty space on one side where you can put the blurb over the top okay so do not ignore those sorts of things because they will help you when it comes to creating your own images but look at the types of information they need to have how they're laid out they're generally quite conventional again the front is the main bit similar to the poster but you cannot do the same image so make sure you don't do that the back will have a main image but a bunch of thumbnails you need that it will have a blurb and then the bottom half of the back page tends to be filled with sort of technical specification type details, logos, information, classification details, all quite boring, but stuff that you must include in yours. So on to the slightly more important stuff. Now the three in the top hand corner is the amount of hours that I think you're going to need to spend doing this piece of work. Now that's three hours, which is quite a lot, but that's going to include you watching films from the genre. So pretty nice piece of work to be doing while you're off school but do watch films from the thriller genre they recommend taken they recommend some bond films they recommend the born films they're all kind of 12 12 a films in the thriller genre so the tone is about right for you i've picked a couple of random different ones there but what i need you to do is watch the films look at the iconography and the cinematography and the branding of those films so i've got four down there for you anyway and start going through basically see mints, but you can see here character, mise-en-scene, narrative themes, the types of shot and colour schemes that they use, and try to nail it down to a few kind of basic ingredients. So by looking at those, I can see lots of capital letters, I can see lots of red and white fonts. It tends to be that there's a protagonist who's a bit flawed, tends to be male, tends to be quite aggressive in their body language, tends to be weapons, I can see a flame on one, I can see guns in two of the other ones. Um, but there might be like a sort of female sidekick as well. I can see that in Disturbia and Inception, for example. But talk through all of those types of things and make notes somewhere, whether it's in your booklet or a spare piece of paper. What type of characters do we get? What types of mise-en-scene do we get? So costume, lighting, loads of low-key lighting, for example, here. Actors, think about their body language and expressions. The makeup, so I can see a bit of blood and sweat on Will Smith's face on the right there. Props, we've talked about, and the types of settings as well. Sometimes they're quite enigmatic, but often they're based um, in big cities. I can see that in Inception and Gemini Man, or maybe somewhere a little bit more isolated, like parts of Shutter Island is, obviously. For narrative, think about Bart's codes. Is it driven by action? Is it driven by enigma, perhaps? Are there binary opposites that are key in these? I would suggest, yes, probably there are. Is there lots of disruption, like Todorov would have suggested? Or are there perhaps character functions like prop mentioned, a hero, a villain, a princess, a helper, and so on and so forth? Think about which of those theories you could easily apply to this genre. Themes are the types of events that happen. Obviously, shot types you know, but get the terminology right. Colour schemes I've mentioned as well. So do watch the films, but also do get a collection of images like these here. And just start picking apart what you think are conventional choices for your genre. Really important that you do that. Enjoy that. Okay, once you've studied your genre, I want you to think about institutions. What type of institutions 
get involved in making thriller films pretty much. So it's a pretty easy one, but what I want you to do is research a bunch of films from your genre. So just find a few random thriller films, go on IMDb or Wikipedia and answer the questions that are on this slide. Really short, really quick, really easy. You'll get it done inside an hour, I would have thought. But it's important you do that because you, when you come to your own ideas, need to use those same sorts of studios and distributors. You need to understand what sort of age certificates they're getting given and why, how long these films tend to be, and start thinking as well about audiences because everything institutions do are for audiences. It's to make money. So what type of audience does they attract? How do they attract them? Perhaps have a go at thinking about the uses and gratifications and which ones are most evident as well. Now, none of this is unimportant, I promise you. You'll have to write a statement of aims um, fairly soon and lots of the answers that you get there will feed into that piece of work which does get graded. Good luck with that. Once you've done your research, then you need to move on to your planning, the ideas stage. Um, and this is really, really important. I'll show you the mark criteria in a minute, but your ideas need to be, like I've said, rooted in the thriller genre, but with your own creative take on them. So coming up with a character that's a bit different or a location that perhaps we don't see so much in thriller films or a narrative that's a little bit more intriguing or complex or just different to what we'd expect. So you should know your genre, you've got that, but you also want to start thinking now about the rough plot for your film. Think about your characters and their backstories. You need at least three, I think, but four or five would be better. And then you need to start finalising those ideas. Now, this takes loads of time. It might take you two hours. It might take you 10 hours. It might be that you think you've got it and then you go to bed and you wake up the next morning and the ideas have developed. So I'm not going to rush this. But the more you think about it, the better the ideas will be. I 100% guarantee you that. Obviously, make sure they fit the thriller genre and the target audience that you're trying to appeal to. So casting people in your age demographic is actually the best thing to do, which is helpful. So one task I want you to come up with is a five-point narrative for your film. You might want to use Todorov for that. So remember, equilibrium at the start, a state of normality. It doesn't have to be perfect calmness, but equilibrium is one. Second comes a disruption. Third comes a recognition that there's been a disruption. So often the hero only just figures out halfway through that something needs fixing. Four is that fixing stage, the repair. And then five is that new equilibrium where we either go back to the start or we fix everything. Or if perhaps it's going to become part of a franchise, maybe we leave it a little bit open-ended um, so that we can get that money-making sequel later on. Either way, you need to write that down. One, because it will help you think about what images you need to get for your DVD and poster. Two, because it will help you write the blurb on the back of your DVD eventually. And three, it just makes sure that you're hopefully coming up with something that fits the genre and the target audience. Once you've done that, you get this, uh, and I will send this around to you. But basically, it's a nice sheet. I'd usually give it to you in A3, where I just expect you to write down some of your ideas. So the types of institutions you've chosen, given the research that you just did, the blurb or the plot that you're going to put on the back of the DVD, so basically developed from the narrative you've just done, what is unique about your film, what mise-en-scene are you choosing for your film, given all the research you've done, into the genre. Tell me about three of your characters or more if you want, obviously, and then start thinking about the branding. So think about the color scheme, think about the name of the film, think about the font you want to use, the tagline, and start kind of developing a bit of imagery that will be perfect for your film. Obviously, you know, the genre that's thriller, but there might be a subgenre. And then the name of your film is probably the thing that's going to come to you last of all. So that's a really nice opportunity for you to just be creative. Um, you can print out multiple copies or if you're doing it electronically, you can keep adding and adapting and changing. But that's something I expect in as well when you come back to school. Now, I'm just going to show you the mark criteria, one to screenshot probably. Um, the statement of aims you will do when you come back, unless it's miles off, in which case I'll email it to you in a couple of weeks. But these are where you get marked in terms of your practical work. 20 marks for meeting the brief. So it's as simple as that, really. Don't go off and do something romantic or comedy because you're not going to be hitting the brief. Don't make a DVD that doesn't look like a DVD. Just stick to what you're meant to do and you can get up to 20 marks. 30 marks are for your use of media language. I've highlighted the key areas, but basically using camera, editing, 
colour, mise-en-scene to create meanings, to tell me who the hero is and who the protagonist and villain is, or to perhaps come up with some interesting intertextuality, or to come up with some slightly more complex representations. But I need you to think about media language throughout. So do take a good look at that. That's for band five, which is grade nine or grade eight. And you can all get that. Don't think my target grade is a five. I'll aim for a five, get yourself a nine, and then you can go into the exams next year feeling pretty confident that you're going to get your target grade at least. So what do I need you to do? Make notes on all of the research that I've told you to do. Look at DVDs, look at posters, look at your genre in depth, and look at the type of companies that get involved in your genre. When you've done that, start thinking about the planning. Now, I've given you a proposal form that looks like that. It's on the student share drive or whatever it's called. So get that printed off or filled in electronically and back to me. That should have been returned to me, but I've only had a couple. So please make sure you do that over the coming day or two. And then have a go at that big A3 sheet of ideas that I have just pointed out as well. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, then don't turn on your Xbox and play games. Send me an email uh, and let's get this thing sorted so that you can get yourself a really, really good grade. I hope that helps and I look forward to seeing your work soon. Goodbye.